Well, hello there everybody and welcome again. So I've called this How Important Are Piano Teachers? And I've been doing quite a bit of research, reading recently, and it turns out actually we are more important than you probably are aware. Um, I just want to read you something from a report into, it's actually into music literacy that's been written. And um, Hilary McQueen, who's written the report, the report says instrumental lessons underpin the music education system and when we talk about instrumental lessons the research shows really quite clearly that the majority of instrumental lessons are actually piano lessons or given at least by piano teachers so i think this is a really key thing that most instrumental teachers most piano teachers are responsible for teaching music literacy and we are responsible and underpin the music education system. Um, I reported much the same thing in my own PhD 10 years ago now. And since then I've, I've referred to us as the Cinderella. And it, I feel as though that happens. We are the Cinderella. We tend to be on the sidelines all the time, but never kind of part of the big party. Um, and that's because we tend to work in isolation and we lack unity as a group, uh, as a profession. So I think, which is why it's really important that um, you take the leap and you become part of something, whether it's EPTA or whether it's the Curious Piano Teachers, then you begin to be represented as a group and therefore we then start to have a voice. I just want to go back to this idea of music literacy because both teachers and students when they were asked the question about how did you learn to read music the agreement was it was through the instrumental teacher so instrumental teachers that's you by the way um, and me we are responsible for teaching our students to be musically literate and that is something that is far, far, far more than just looking at the dots and playing them on here. Music literacy, it's very hard to define in the same way that musicianship is, to be quite honest. But we do know it's consisting of the ability to hear music, the ability to realise not just the dots and the rhythms, but actually the stylistic intentions. It's about being able to compose. It's about having a knowledge of the music in a very holistic type of way. And we also know that part of that is knowing um, about the music that you are playing. So I've taken a piece of music here and I thought I'd use this as an illustration for how you can help your students to be rather more musically literate. And we're going to look at it from an, a bit of an analytical point of view. And the piece I've chosen, actually, is a piece that I'm sure you will all know. It's Musette in D. Uh, it's an anonymous piece, possibly written by one of Bach's sons from the uh, Anna Magdalena notebook. And it's this one. Yeah, I'm not going to play it all the way through to you. But uh, that, that, I'm sure, will uh, ring a bell with you. And this is from our um, essential repertoire collection that we have. This is for what we call elementary three. And elementary three, you might translate into approximately grade two. And what we've done with every piece in our um, essential repertoire is we have given it a rating of whether it's um, a green piece, green for go, in other words, it's quite easy for this particular level, or whether like this one, it's what we call pink for think. So it's a more challenging piece. And what makes it a pink for think, what the challenging pieces have, I'll just read it to you, they require the student to, to navigate multiple concepts and or skills. And I'll show you what we mean in that in a moment. Multiple concepts and or skills. So as a piano teacher, you need to think carefully about why you are assigning a piece or why a student is learning a piece. What are they going to get from it? 
what don't they know that they're going to need to know in order to play the piece? Uh, what are the challenges in that piece? How can you break the piece down? Because what you don't want to do is just start at bar one and assign them, oh, could you learn the first eight bars of this hand separately for next week? They need a bit more support. They need a little bit more um, background. They need, you need to help them know about the rhythm values that are in here, about the key, before they actually start to go home and do their practice. That's your job. That's why you're here as a teacher. It might not have been the way you worked, you were taught, but actually it is the way that we need to be working now, not just a bar one approach. Think Paul Harris, simultaneous learning. Get out your simultaneous map and deconstruct the piece. Have, be a bit messy with it. I love being messy. You know, look at it before you actually teach it. So when you actually sit and look at it, you'll find out a few vital things. It's in 2-4. It is in D major. It is an ABA structure. So it starts with a bit I, put, I played you. It then goes into this B bit. And then it goes back to the beginning and literally repeats that A again. So like so many pieces, it's the B section that is more challenging in this. Although it starts okay, so differently from above, but you've got the octaves here. And, and then I love this bit at bar 13 where it goes into a hurdy-gurdy. Yeah, I love that bit. Hurdy-gurdy is sounding slightly dissonant and things. Um, and you've got the drone, of course, you know, you've got the drone there. So being aware of the drone in that musette. And then you come to bar 17 and the last four bars. So I'm going to play you those four bars. Listen out for which bar you think is the challenging bar. The challenging bar of the whole piece where they're having to do multiple skills. Have a listen. <laughs> bar 18 so in bar 18 the right hand goes and it's it's the movement of the hands that's the challenging thing and the reading so the right hand goes it's finger five on e finger two on g sharp finger one on a and then a move to finger three on the d so let's just break that down a, a little more detail you've playing an e then you've got to pick up and move to a G sharp. Don't stretch, don't encourage a stretch there. Just take, let the arm take the finger to the note. The thumb tucks under and plays the next note. And then the third finger has to extend again to go to a D. And then you're home and dry. Lots and lots of little nubs there. Have you thought of them at that detail before? Because that's where the student will, will, um, will trip up. And at the same time, the left hand, haven't done that yet. It starts on an E, finger five, up to a D, finger one, and then a finger three on C sharp, finger two, finger one on E. So, first thing is they've got to make move. Again, use the arm to take, let them take them there, finger one. And then they have to miss out finger two and get finger three on C sharp. So the fingers have to be really close together. And then finger two goes on the D, like that. And then finger one. So again, there's two or three little moves in there that they have to make that might be very new to them. Certainly at this, this particular level, they might not have made those moves before. But it's not just the left hand that has the little moves or the right hand, they have to do it together. takes quite a bit of practice. So how are you going to get them to practice it? Are you going to write it out for them and just the right hand and send that home and write out the left hand, get them to write out the left hand in the lesson, get them to send um, and, and they take it home with them as well. All these little steps, it takes longer, it might feel, but I can guarantee that the outcome in a few weeks time is going to be a lot more secure and the students will understand. 
And if they don't, then you know you have missed something out of the step and out of the process. So by doing this analysis, by looking in real detail at the piece, you'll soon discover what is a problem and how you're going to help and aid your students. And yes, this is helping their music literacy because I might not actually refer to the notes on the page. I'm certainly not going to ask them to read the notes like this as they try and play because that's going to completely stop them being free and easy with their technique. But what I might do is I might say to them in bar 17 and 18, and they're not playing, yeah, bar 17 and 18, how many E's are there all together? And they'd have to look and they'd have to count. And I might say, and what, what is the fingering for the E's in bar 17 and 18? And then they'll discover that the first two have a finger four and the second one has a finger five. You can play these little games that just actually enhance the learning process, make it more engaging, make it more fun, make it more enjoyable so that they become musically literate. literate. They can not only um, um, play the notes, but they understand what it is that's going on behind there and why that might be challenging. So I've talked a bit longer than I normally do today, but I hope that's, that's helpful that, yes, we play an important role in music education. We play a really important role in teaching literacy and in teaching our students to think or in, in teaching our students to read, which means that us, the piano teacher, we have to be curious in our teaching and learn to think critically and ask why. Why do I teach in that way? I'm going to leave you with that thought for now. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.